Hi, I'm Juan from Motion VFX. In this new tutorial, we will discover M HUD 3, which gives you the ability to add and track HUD and UI elements inside Final Cut Pro 10. We will focus on how to use the two tracking modes, the 2D tracker and the planar tracker, and see how to customize the various elements. But first, let's see the two projects we will work on. First thing to do is to go to the Titles and Generators tab. In the Titles, I will go to the m 3 folder. In this folder, you will find not less 140 elements. All the elements are fully customizable and trackable. They are arranged in different categories like annotations, caption, footage frame, icons, logos, maps, pointers, and many more. To start, you just have to drag and drop an element on your project. For the first example, I will select a pointer and put it on my video layer. I will adjust the duration and check the animation. On the top of the element, you can see a grid. The grid will be used by the planar tracker. It will help you to select which plane you want to track. There is also a 2D track that will be demonstrated in a second example. To help you to be the most accurate, there are two options in the OSC settings that you can enable. The first one is magnification, which adds a magnification effect for the four points of the grid. Very useful. The second one is Angle Guides, which will help you to see the perspective of the grid. Once your grid is on the right position, you just have to click on the yellow track button. And now my pointer animation is stuck to the glass. I don't need any more to display the grid, so here are tips to hide quickly the grid and be more focused on your element. You just have to click on the transform tool and the grid will disappear. To keep the animation on screen at the end of the clip, I will disable the animation out parameter. I can go to the global parameters to adjust the aspect ratio and the position. You have many parameters to play with, like the line thickness, the rotation, and many more. The orb effect is a perfect parameter to create the Iron Man HUD. If you enable it, you will be able to rotate the plane around the eye or the head. Like the glow, there are more effects you can add, like the blur, a grid effect, or a fisheye effect. All these effects will modify the global element. But the thing which is very powerful with m 3 is the fact that you can modify individually each layer from your elements. Each m 3 elements are built with their own numbers of layers and effects. For example, my pointer elements contain three layers. For each layer, you will be able to modify individually the brightness, the size, the color, the position, and specific parameters. I will add a second element. Like the first one, I will track it. In the global transform parameters, I will adjust the aspect ratio and the size. And as I've told you before, you can see that the element contains specific parameters. For example, here I can switch the type from percentage to number. I can select the maximum value that will be displayed. And like the previous element, I've got access to the layers parameters. This element contains four layers. Each one contains also specific parameters. In this case, I will be able to play with the numbers of the lines, the thickness and the colors.
On the layer 4, I will be able to modify the type of the indicator. I can switch between several choices like square, round, bevel, arrow. To conclude with this first example, I will select all the elements and create a carbon clip. I will add an MFIM look effect in order to color grade this composition. I will add a 3D LUT, like this one. And with the basic adjustment, I will make some modification to get a colder look. I will also add an off-screen lens flare to complete the look, and it's done. For the second example, we will use a second tracker, the 2D tracker. First, I will select the element, add it on the project, and adjust the duration. Then, in the inspector, we switch a tracker type to 2D. I will enable the magnification option. I will choose to follow this part of the image. As you can see, I'm not in the first frame of my clip. So for the track, I will do it in two steps. First, I will enable the reverse mode to track backward. Then I will disable it to track forward. The difference between a planner tracker and a 2D tracker is that the 2D tracker won't affect the perspective view. In this case, my element will move only in X and Y. So now I can customize the template. I will change the text and change the color of the text. Let's add a new element. And to show you the difference between the 2D tracker and the planar tracker, I will select a simple linear element. I will adjust the grid to fit the plane of the rifle. As you can see, the linear template will follow perfectly the perspective of the rifle. so I can track it. Now we'll offset the position to put the element on the trigger of the rifle. I will just modify the color and it's done. I will add a third template. I will select the target element. Like before, I will track the plane of the rifle. I will adjust the scale.
And when you have some perspective effect like this one with a complex element, there is an awesome feature to create a nice 3D effect. By playing with the Z offsets, you can create some 3D depth and detach all the layer. With a motion, it will create a nice parallax effect. Now we'll customize the templates by adjusting the layer size and the colors. I can enable the two other elements to see the complete composition. I will select all the elements and create a carbon clip, and I will drag and drop an MFIM look preset to complete the final result. If you want to test MHUD3, only one address, motionvfx.com, where you will be able to download the demo version. Don't forget to subscribe to the MotionVFX YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye.